Welcome to your online learning management system, Google Classroom. You can access Google Classroom by opening a Google web browser and typing classroom.google.com in the address bar. You can also access it through the Google Apps Launcher. Sign in with your school Gmail account, your username at rcs-k12.us. Once you are logged in, you will see your Google Classroom homepage. This page is filled with your class cards. You can click on the specific class you want to enter and return to the classes page when you are ready to enter another class. In order to enroll in a class and have it appear on your classes page, you need to join a class with a class code or through a link sent by your teacher. You can click on the plus sign in the top right hand corner, select join class, and then type in the class code. The class codes are six to seven characters and use letters and numbers. Many of your teachers may choose to send an email asking you to join their classroom. You'll be able to click on the link in the email and enroll yourself in the classes. It is important to make sure you unenroll from any of your last year's courses. Click on the three dots over any of your old classes and simply click unenroll. Let's talk a little bit about each of your class cards. Your homeroom card will include the weekly schedule of assignments, large group meetings, and small group meetings, announcements pertaining to that week, morning meeting video, your social emotional learning activities, and comments students may have on social emotional connections. Each subject area cards will include teaching videos pertaining to individual subjects, assignments for those subject areas, anchor charts needed for these subject areas, collaboration comments of students, and teacher feedback related to assignments for the subjects. Let's take a look inside a sample class to explore more of the features. Once inside the classroom, you will see three tabs at the top. The first is the stream. The stream is a chronological list of the latest updates, assignments, and discussion posts for the class. Your teacher sets the student's permissions for the stream. If enabled, this is where you can pose questions, talk to peers, or share a resource. The stream is kind of like the social hub of the classroom. On the left side of the stream is the upcoming section. This notifies you of any upcoming assignments you need to complete. You can click the view all to see all upcoming assignments. The next tab is classwork. This is where you will access assignments, classroom files, or materials. The materials added to the classwork page may look different in each class. On the classwork page, there are three important links. View your work, your Google Calendar, and then your class drive folder. Clicking on the view your work will let you see any assignments you have, any missing assignments, and feedback on your assignments. Clicking on the Google Calendar icon, you'll be able to access the calendar for this class. On it, you will see when assignments are due and any upcoming classroom events. The last link is the Class Drive folder. You can click on the folder icon and it will open up your classroom folder in Drive. This is essentially a digital binder that contains all the classroom materials and documents shared with you for this class. This folder is automatically created in your Drive. The third tab is the People tab. This is where you can find your teacher's email as well as the email for your classmates. This feature is helpful for when you need to contact a classmate about a group project or reach out to the teacher with a question. Let's go over the main menu. The main menu are these three lines over here to the left-hand side of Google Classroom. You will click the Classes button to return back to the home page. So for example, if I'm in ELA and I want to go back to one of my other classes, I'd hit the main menu, classes, and it would bring me back to my classroom homepage. The next thing on the main menu is the calendar. You can filter to see all classes or select a single class. This will show any upcoming assignments that you have. The next thing on our main menu is to do. This gives you a complete list of all the assignments that you have that are either missing, things that are due, and any other upcoming events that have been scheduled by your teachers. 
Underneath the to-do, you will see all of the courses that you are enrolled in. Below that, we see a button that says Archived Classes. These are classes that you were previously enrolled in that have been archived by your teachers. And then the final thing that we're going to talk about on the main menu is the settings. This is where you can go to control your notification settings. Each student is allowed to choose their notification preferences. If you would like to receive all email notifications, you can leave it on. If you'd like to turn it off, just click the toggle button to turn it off. You do not need to enable notifications for all features. In fact, some students have reported it feels too overwhelming to receive all notifications for all classes. They end up with too many emails in their inbox and struggle with figuring out which ones are the most important. It is up to you to decide which email notifications you would prefer to receive. You can go through and click on or off any of the notification preferences you prefer. Some students prefer to organize their classrooms in the order of their class schedule. For example, if you have science first hour and want it to be your first class, you can click on the three dots and click move. Then you can move it to the beginning. You can continue to do this with all of your courses to put them in an order that you prefer. You will notice that there are two shortcuts on each of these classroom cards. One is to open your work, and the other one is to go directly to your Google Drive folder for that class. So let's click on this Open Your Work. This will show me again everything that is due and has been assigned or has been returned to me. If we also look at this ELA card, we see that I have an assignment that's due tomorrow. We can click right there, and it'll bring us to the assignment. For this specific assignment, the teacher created a copy for each student to complete. I can then go in and fill out the assignment. Once I have completed the assignment, I can go back to my Google Classroom and click Turn In. Some assignments may ask you to upload your own work, such as a document, video, photo, or slide. Let's look at this example for art. It asks me to upload a photo of the self-portrait that I created. I will first need to do the self-portrait, then take a photo of it. If I've already uploaded it to Google Drive, I can click in my Google Drive. If I need to upload it as a file, I would click File, Upload, and I would find where it is located on my computer. Once I have attached my photo, I can turn in my assignment. If I've made a mistake, I can click Unsubmit, and then I can re-upload the right image and turn it back in again. Your teacher will notice and see the specific date that you turn an assignment in on. You can ask specific questions to your classmates about your assignment. It is a great way to reach out because they can help you. If you have a specific question for your teacher, you would type it here in the private comment section. Take some time to explore the features of Google Classroom. Reach out to your classmates and teachers if you have any questions.